I can't tell you how really rotten I feel that Edie and I had a fight at your nice little party here. Oh, Mr. Grant, I'm sure nobody noticed. Nobody noticed? An angry woman comes in and yells, I can take off my own coat, Lou. Walks into your toilet and locks the door. <laughs> comes out two hours later and shouts, thank you for a wonderful evening. <laughs> and asks Murray's wife to drive her home. Nobody noticed? Mr. Grant, it's just because it happened to you. I'm sure no one else is even aware of it. I mean, we always think people are aware of things because we're so very aware ourselves and they're not. Really? Really. Oh, boy, that's good. I was really worried about that. Drink, Lou? Uh, no, no, thanks, Murray. Lou? Uh huh? I really admire you for having the nerve to stay here after that humiliating experience. I think I will, Murray. You see, were I you, and I realized I was making a spectacle of myself, I would dissolve into tears. But then, men like you don't cry, do they, Lou? What, what do you do? Make it a double, Murray. Harry? Yes? Have you seen Lars anywhere? No, Phyllis, I haven't. Oh, would you look at that? Oh. Somebody spilled coffee all over my brand new tablecloth. Oh, don't worry, dear. That'll come up with no trouble at all. You simply stretch the fabric over a bowl and then pour boiling water through the stain from a height of two feet. <laughs> well, gee, that's great. Thank you, Sue Ann. I better get my wrap. That nice man said he'd be bringing the car around any minute. Now, wasn't that sweet of him to say he'd take me home? I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to talk more, dear. <laughs> Who's little Bo Peep? Oh, that's Sue Ann Nivens. She does the Happy Homemaker show at our station. You know, she gives household hand sewing lessons, recipes, cooking lessons, things like that. Hmm. How in the world did I live so long without having seen the Happy Homemaker? I love her dimples. I wonder if she made them herself. Excuse me. Good night, Mayor. Great party. Thank you, Murray. Good night. Good night, Mr. Grant. Uh, sorry I ruined your party, Mary. Oh. Don't feel bad, Mayor. Even if everybody else did have a bum time. I met a terrific chick. She gave me her phone number. Ted, she gave you the number to call when you want the correct time. I thought her voice sounded familiar. Good night. That must be Lars. Lars? My Lars? Dr. Lindstrom? He offered to take me home. Wasn't that nice of him? Mary, thank you very much for a wonderful party. I just feel terrible going off and leaving you with all this cleaning up to do. Oh, no, please don't worry about but, it. But it seems so wrong to just run off. No, Rhoda will help. Well, and... all right, if you insist. But remember, dear, do try a little iodine for that scratch on the desk. And baking soda will bring that grease up out of the carpet like nothing. Oh, dear, dear, uh, d don't throw away those coffee grounds. They're the perfect plant food for Mary's geraniums. Now, if you want to tidy up in a hurry, think of your living room as a big clock. Start at midnight, and then go around the room working clockwise toward the kitchen. You'll be done in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Thank you. What time is it, Mary? Phyllis, if you think of the living room as a big clock, it's now two chairs past the couch. <laughs> oh, I don't understand why he isn't home yet. It's been two and a half hours. I'm sure there's a very good explanation. Maybe he was called away on an emergency dermatology thing or something. <laughs> there are no emergency dermatology things, Mary. I can't understand why he hasn't called. Lars has been trained to call. <laughs> I'm sure there's a very good explanation. Look, why don't I call Sue Ann and see if anything has happened? Hello? Lars! Yes, she is. It's Lars. Just a minute. Oh, I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation. Hello, Lars. Yes, I'm here, waiting for you. <laughs> oh, what? What? Is anyone hurt? Oh, oh, thank heaven. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, wasn't that lucky? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> See you soon. Uh -huh. Well, what happened? Well... It seems they were driving down Washburn when this dog jumped in front of the car and Lars swerved and hit a tree. Uh, nobody was hurt, thank goodness, but the right fender was badly damaged, so they've stopped to have it repaired. Isn't it lucky they were right near an all-night body shop? <laughs> and he's waiting till it's ready. Uh, 
So you see, there was a very good explanation after all. <laughs> You sure it was him? Yes. There they were, Lars and Sue Ann, having lunch in a back booth. I wouldn't have believed it. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe it was just a lunch and nothing more. No, no, I don't think so, Mayor. I watched her show today. She spent 10 minutes on how to remove lipstick stains. <laughs> anyway, I, Sue Ann just doesn't seem the type, you know? She seems more like the kind of woman you leave for someone else. <laughs> now, Phyllis. There is the other woman. Mm. Do you think she suspects? No, I don't think so. She would have said something if she did. Mary. I mean, sometimes I think Phyllis is, is so naive. So, you're going to tell her? No, I can't. I mean, I just can't. Would you? No. I always try to stay all the way out of that kind of scene. Ever since Cynthia Zimmer. You know my roommate in New York? Not the 68th Street roommate, the 83rd Street. Oh, yeah. She was the champ. 14 married guys in one year. You should have seen Christmas at our apartment. You never saw more gifts and less people. <laughs> Mary? Oh. Hello, Rhoda. Hi. Hi, Phyllis. Mary? You know, uh, last night when Lars called and told me that he was delayed because he took the cart to an all-night body shop? Yeah. Well, Mary, I simply don't believe it. I simply don't believe what an incredible job they did. <laughs> Do you know that this morning I walked around that car five times and the paint matches so perfectly I couldn't tell there had been an accident? <laughs> That's terrific. Mary, have you had dinner yet? Yeah, I just finished. Oh, it's too bad. Lars called from the office and said he'd be working late tonight. I said, Lars, are you really working late again tonight? And he confessed. But he was not working late tonight. He was playing poker with the boys. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> Don't you think that's cute? <laughs> I do. I think it's cute. <laughs> I mean that he'd fib about playing poker with the boys instead of just telling me. It is sort of cute, isn't it? <laughs> Girls, isn't it sort of cute? <laughs> yeah, it's cute. <laughs> Mary? Have you heard from DeFalco yet? No, Mr. Grant. I'll let you know as soon as he calls. Oh. Is the station manager giving you a hard time about DeFalco again, Lou? Yeah. And it seemed like such a terrific idea. Remember, Mary, I said, have a cameraman ride around in the back of a patrol car to film an on-the-spot arrest. And you said the idea was... Wonderful. I wouldn't be in this mess now if you had said rotten. You know that? <laughs> but no, you had to say wonderful. Say, Mayor, you'll never guess what I saw going on down the hall. Come on, you want to guess? Uh, no, Ted, not right now. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. I'll give you 20 questions. Yeah, I'm really kind of busy. How about you, Murray? Two can play this game. Hey, I'll bet that's where the expression came from. <laughs> no, not now, Ted. All right, I'll give you a hint. It's uh, Animal, and it concerns Sue Ann Nibbins, the happy homemaker. Uh, Ted, what, what did you say about Sue Ann Nibbins? said it's Animal, and it concerns Sue Ann Nibbins, the happy homemaker. You've got 19 questions left. Ted, what did you say about Sue Ann Nibbins? Well, <clears throat> I saw the guy that Sue Ann Nibbins has been playing around with. Saw him coming out of the dressing room. Funny thing is, I know him from somewhere, but I, I can't remember where. Say, Mur, maybe you can remember. He's a tall, blonde-haired fellow. Ted, are, are you sure that they're playing around? Of course. It's all over the building. <laughs> but you know what really teased me off? Sue Ann Nibbins. Right under my very nose, all this time, hot to trot, and I don't do anything about it. <laughs> I can only remember who that guy was. It's impossible. Patrol car that hasn't made an arrest in three weeks. Hey, Lou, if you want some real action, send him over to the happy homemaker's dressing room. <laughs> Gee, if I can only remember who that guy was. How can it not work? I know it's going to work. Mary, tell me it's going to work. It is going to work, Mr. Grant. It's a wonderful idea. See? 
You did it again, Mary. I gave you another chance to say rotten, but you said wonder. You're in this up to here. Hi, hi. Ready for lunch, Mary? Hi, Phyllis. Oh, hi, Phyllis. As a matter of fact... Yes, I am. ...just this last week. I'm ready for lunch. All set. Bye, Ted. Uh, see you guys in an Bye. hour. Come on, Bye. Phyllis. Of course, Lars. <laughs> Lars? What about Lars? Oh, I've been sitting here trying to think of who it is that's been playing around with Sue Ann Nivens, and it finally came to me. And it is definitely... not Lars, no. This is short, he's fat, he had the red hair, and he had this funny walk. It was not Lars. <laughs> an object of pity that even Rhoda is being kind. No! Phyllis, Mary, do you know how hard it is to make an apple pie? <laughs> My beautiful hands. Hands that once touched the notes of Chopin. <laughs> heavens, I've been able to hide my feelings from him. Of course, there have been a few close calls. Last night during Hawaii Five O, I began to weep uncontrollably. <laughs> but I covered by telling Lars I was moved by the grandeur of Diamond Head. <laughs> Listen, Phyllis, please, whatever you do, don't do anything drastic. Just wait this out and the whole thing will just blow over. I'll wait it out. Sooner or later, Lars is going to get tired of her. And he'll come back to me. And then I'm going to punish him for this. <laughs> Phyllis, you don't mean that. If only he didn't flaunt it in my face. Do you know, Mary, since he's been seeing her, he's gained nine pounds? Do you know that, that his clothes are cleaner when he comes home at night than they are when he leaves in the morning? <laughs> I... I I must be honest, however. Lars is not entirely to blame. I, I too, am somewhat responsible for what's happened. You see, Mary and uh, Rhoda, <laughs> some men are just threatened by a real woman. I I'm afraid I've just been too much of a real woman. <laughs> Uh, Phyllis, how? How were you uh, too much of a real woman? Huh? I don't like to brag, Rhoda. But Lars and I had an incredible love life. Would you like to know how incredible? <laughs> oh, gosh, Phil, I don't... You know. I'm going to tell you how of any real purpose. incredible it was. I think Lars summed it up best when he turned to me one night and said, Felis jag har Apparently, 
Apparently, that's all over now. <laughs> Phyllis, it's not all over. You know, just the other day, I was reading this wonderful book called The Life of the Bee. <laughs> Maybe you read it. Did you know the male bee is nothing but the slave of the queen? And once the male bee, uh, how should I say, um, has serviced the queen, <laughs> the male dies. All in all, not a bad system. <laughs> to ask, how was the latest DeFalco film? Well, I'll give you a hint. The highlight was when the two policemen he was riding with stopped, got out, and helped a wino on with his shoe. <laughs> Mary? Uh, try to reach DeFalco for me and uh, tell him the assignment is over. Well, he's in a patrol car, Mr. Grant. I'm not sure I can locate him. Mm. Just find a neighborhood with the lowest crime rate. <laughs> Mary. Phyllis. I've come to enlist your help. Well, uh, Phil, it's, it, it's kind of bad around here today. Mary, I've decided I'm not going to give Lars up without a fight. And I think you should be there with me when I confront Miss Happy Homemaker face to face. Well, Phil, I wish I could. It's just that I'm so very busy Mary. here. Mary. The news comes and goes. This is my life we're talking about. <laughs> Phil, look, I just don't think that I should be there when you talk to Sue Ann. Mary, you have to be there. One, you're my friend. Two, you will be neutral. Three, if you're not there, I will rip her face off. <laughs> I'll go with you. Thank you, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, Ted. Hello, Phyllis. <laughs> And now, Billy, as I have the two tablespoons of butter, I would love it if you would dolly in for a nice close shot. Right. Thank you. And after I add the chocolate to the hot milk, I would love an over-the-head shot looking down into the bowl just as I beat in the four egg yolks. Sorry, Sue Ann. We only have two cameras for this spot. Oh? Where's the third camera? We need it for the needlepoint demo that follows. Oh. I'm sorry, Billy, but I cannot do a chocolate souffle with only two cameras. <laughs> Why don't you arrange to set up the other camera and we'll just hold the rehearsal until you're ready? Whatever you say, Sue Ann. Ten minutes, everybody. Hi, Sue Ann. Oh, Mary, how nice to see you. Don't you look pretty? Oh, thank you. Uh, you remember... Phyllis Lindstrom. Oh, yes, from your party. Nice to see you again. I'll come right to the point. I'm here to talk about you, and Mary's here to see to it that I don't rip your face off. Phyllis! <laughs> Mary! Mary! Ten minutes ago, an armored truck was held up for $200,000. You want me to get a film crew out there? We don't have to. DeFalco! DeFalco! Oh, Mr. Uh -huh. I said it would work, and it worked! <laughs> yeah. Mr. Graham. What? What's the matter? I have a chocolate souffle in the oven. One slight tremor, and it's ruined. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, DeFalco's on his way in right now with the film. Come on, we got a lot of work to do if we want to be ready for tonight's show. Mary? Coming! Mary! Okay, Phyllis, I'll be back just as soon as I can. I okay. promise. Why don't we go into my living room? I'm sure we'll be much more comfy in here. <laughs> now, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? I'm here to talk about you and Lars. Oh. Shall I tell you the, the sort of relationship Lars and I have? Is, does this work? Oh, please. I shall be very happy to tell you exactly, after 17 years of marriage, the sort of relationship that Lars and I have. Uh, is Dr. Lindstrom in? Mrs. Lindstrom? I see. Thank you. He is with a patient. He will call me back first chance he gets. So now you see, that is the sort of relationship Lars and I have. 
I'll be right back. After this brief look at my chocolate souffle. <laughs> I think what we have to talk about is more important than your chocolate souffle. I'm sorry, but this is a very critical time. Well, I'm sorry. This is a very critical time for me, too. <laughs> Well, there was no need for violence. Uh, but why in the West? Sitting and talking is one thing, but why you should deliberately destroy an innocent souffle that never did you any harm? <laughs> one moment of harm, that's beyond me. I think you've gone too far. You're bananas, you know that? <laughs> I'm going to try to forgive you for the souffle. <laughs> I realize how difficult it must be for you losing a wonderful man like Lars. Did you know that Lars has a neurotic fear of swallowing hair? <laughs> Did you know that Lars gets car sick if he drives over 30 miles an hour? <laughs> it's true. We missed the first act of Man of La Mancha, West Side Story, and The Sound of Music. Oh, not The Sound of Music. <laughs> that is Lars, and that is the man you want. Well, I'm sorry, but nothing you have said could ever make me change my mind about Lars. We're ready for rehearsal, Sue Ann. Excuse me. I have a show to do. <laughs> Phyllis. Mary. She won't let him go. Mary, please. Talk to her. Our oh, lovely Billy, I see you found the third camera. Okay, hold it. Uh, Sue Ann, listen to me, because I've got to be in a screening room in 45 seconds. Ted already knows about this thing with you and Lars. You know what a big mouth Ted has. And what Ted doesn't tell, I will tell. And pretty soon, it's going to be all over the station. And they're not going to think that that's a terrific image for the happy homemaker. So you see, it comes down to a choice. Either Lars or your show. I've got to go. I will see you later. <laughs> Since you put it that way, Mary, I, I don't seem to have any choice. I'm not doing it for myself, you understand. But for those ladies out there who need me. By the way, Sue Ann, do you know how to remove chocolate stains? Yes, I do. Oh, good. <laughs> with me every 15 minutes. <laughs> Can I use your phone, Mary? Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. Well, we talked it all out, and we both agreed a marriage without trust is no marriage at all. Uh, is Dr. Lindstrom... Oh. 